Just come on back and be with us, and let's just look for God to touch us in a very special way. After we pray, if you'll remain standing, we're going to worship the Lord tonight through song. I tell you, God's good to us. He's given us a good day. Amen. It's good to be alive. It's good to have the strength and the blessings of the Lord upon us. And thank God for all of His blessings. The blessings of the Lord are real. Father, thank you. God, thank you for the touch of your presence this morning. But God, we need your touch tonight. I'm asking you, Lord, to let us worship you in spirit and in truth. God, let our hearts, let our hearts be given totally to you tonight, Lord, in worship. Father, one more time, God, one more time, Lord, for the anointing of God. Lord, let the songs be anointed. Let us enter into your presence. Father, magnify yourself. Manifest yourself here tonight, Father, as we worship you. Yeah. 
Jesus. Mm. Mm. Things up there. Thank you.
Hallelujah. I don't know if you noticed it or not, the pastor's back here playing drums, so he asked me to take up the offer. This church is filled with incredible musical talent. It, it, so many people can play different instruments, and uh, you know some of the singers can sing, you know, all you know, different kind of alto, tenor. There's not a lot of churches that are blessed with a lot of that, and I've been in churches where it's really scarce, you know, but. Uh, God has blessed Sam Asset Church with uh, music and musicians. Um, so as we transition to offering, you know, I, I asked God, what would you have me do during this revival? What would you have me give during this revival? Because it's important to not only give to, to build up the church, but give to bless the man and woman of God that have come to us. Amen. And so... He did lay thing, numbers on my heart, and I, I'm just, I praise him that he is the provider. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. He has provided so many things for Chris and I through our 33 and a half years of marriage. I've seen, we've seen him do things that only he could do. You know, sometimes when the money runs out, sometimes the money runs out. I know we've all been there. But it's like when you're down to nothing. Just like preacher said, God's up to something. Because sometimes he'll take you to a place. He'll let you get to that place where it feels kind of barren. Because he really wants you to rely on him. And he wants you to watch what he's about to do. Amen. So I encourage you tonight. Give, 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 give. Tithe offerings, special offerings. Give in this revival. Give with a purpose. Amen. I prayed to God, and, and I'm giving with a purpose. And I encourage you to do the same thing, because there's nothing you can do to outgive God. But let me tell you, when you really give from in here, when you hear his voice, and you give from in here, back to him through this offering plate or offering bag, what he will do for you will be incredible. One time, Chris and I were down to nothing. I had $3.00. I had $3 left on a Wednesday night. We were in a different uh, church at that time. And they had me take up the offering that night. I said, oh, well, okay, God. But we, uh, you know, Chris said, what are you going to say? And I said, well, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak through me. Because right. a lot of times with me, I kind of like to, I'll write some things down, but I really want God to speak through me. Because sometimes the time, well, always the timing of God is better. And, uh, so I took the $3 out of my wallet, and I told the people, I said, I'm taking my last $3, and I'm laying them down before the Lord. And I laid them actually on the floor next to the, to the offering plate. And I felt the Holy Spirit when I did that. I said, I'm laying these last $3 down. We're almost out of gas in our cars. We have nothing else. Now, we're both working, but we just hit one of those dry places <laughs> where... Everything and everything was going on where, you know, it took all the money. And so we had a sale coming up that we were in charge of, an estate sale, that, you know, in the next few days looked pretty good. But the, the uh, owner of the house who was having that sale decided to start giving all the big items away to her family. And so, uh, you know, you're watching all this and you're going, oh, man, don't just leave silverware for us to sell. Don't just leave, you know, little Tupperware items. Uh, we need a little bit more than that. And, of course, we're watching all the big items go away. And then I looked at Chris and I said, well, we've never gotten out of covenant with God. Never. Not ever in our 33 and a half years of marriage. We've always paid our tithe. We've always given offerings. And when I laid that last $3 down that Wednesday night and the sale was coming up Friday, I did it for a purpose. I said, God... I can't do anything with this $3, but I know what you can do with it. So I laid it down before him. And on that Friday, we were looking around the house. Most of the big items are gone. But people just started flowing in to the house. Now, it's that anointing that is on a man and woman of God. When you step into a place and the anointing's on you, guess what? That place should be even more blessed. So as we're there... 
people are just flowing into the house, buying all kinds of small stuff, small stuff, small stuff, small stuff, small stuff. And I was thinking, you know, I'm always the digit guy, so I run it through my head. And I thought, well, okay, we're going to make a couple hundred dollars, and praise God. Well, by the end of that first day, we made, we, not the, the sale. The sale made a lot of money. We took home $700 on that one day. God is real. He will take care of his children. Oh, yeah. He just wants to see where your level of dedication is. Amen. And your obedience. So I just encourage you, give in this revival. Give. Give in this revival. Say, well, Brother Ed, I don't have much. Watch out then, because that's right when God's ready to do something. But give in this revival. If you have the ushers right now, come forward. As a little footnote to that story, when we showed up that Friday to do that sale, we were on empty in our gas tank. So then, when you're down to nothing, God is way up to something. So praise his matchless name. Brother Rick, would you pray tonight? Father, we do want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us in every hour of our need, Lord. All that we have, Lord, has come from you. So why would we not return back to you a portion of what yes. you've already given to us? Father, I just pray that you let your blessing and anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, touch evangelism every part of the service here, and let us hear from your voice. Father, we also pray that you take this off and let it meet the need, Lord, as intended for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Stretch yourself. There's nothing God won't do for you. All right. As we move forward in this service, we got some special singing that's happening tonight. Sister Wilkerson, you're going to come up and sing first. Sister Wilkerson, I've been knowing her since 1980, back in the North Sarasota Church of God days. And I uh, used to travel some with her and her husband and sing, and Frida, and, you know. Um, yeah, we have a good time. I don't know anybody. And I'm going to say this honestly. I don't know anyone who knows more songs than she does and never puts a word in front of her. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Ed, the last time you bragged on me. <laughs> no, I made a big boo-boo. So I don't take, I don't pay The Lord's blesses. You know, this song has to do about the tribulation time. And all we have to do is just look around us, you know. They're, they're calling this year the year of the earthquakes. I expect a lot more earthquakes to have here in America and all over. And so we've got just a short time to work. The Lord impresses me. But this is a time of sorrow. 
that's coming upon the land, but we have to be strong and a lot of work to be done. <coughs> but when we get to the time when the reign of the Antichrist, we're not going to be here. <coughs> This old world begins to rock in Fidel's and Skeptic's heart. There's an awful kind of anguish coming on. All these years, Sister Wilkinson, you still got your own band following you around. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. All right, Sister Taylor is going to bless us with a song at this time.
Found him faithful in the midst of the storm? Yes. Have you found him faithful in the good times of your life? Yes. He's always there. Yes. How many of you know that God works night shift? Yes. I like that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, he, he's there. He's waiting on you at the midnight hour whenever you wake up. And yes. Sounds like the whole house is so quiet. You're thinking, Lord, the whole world's asleep and God's looking right on you. He's watching over you. Because he's watching over us at night. Thank God for that. You know, I started thinking, Brother Ed said a lot of truth. Our church is so blessed with talent. So blessed with talent. And I still stand amazed at times whenever that we don't have a drummer. Or we don't have a bass player. And sometimes we come down to the place where that we don't have a piano player. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord, you know, all of our talent left at one time. Thank God tonight that God blesses us and he keeps us going and this church is so blessed. We're blessed this week to have Brother and Sister Bowling to be with yeah. us. Man, I just counted a blessing. Amen. They're going to be uh, leading us in worship tonight. I don't know if Sister Bowling's going to be singing or not. But, uh, come on, brother. You just obey God. That's all I can ever ask you to do. And we're going to worship the Lord with you tonight. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. God, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Coming back for us, praise God. You can go sing tonight or tomorrow night, whatever you want. Huh? Uh, right. Just come on now. We'll get a little more time tonight. Amen. You help us here. How, we, uh, how about you, drummer? <laughs> Every bass player, guitar, whoever, everybody, please come on, that's fine. I used to play them drums too.
Amen. We'll be better, won't we? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He knows it all and gives us everything we need Amen. to be in the center of His will. Praise God. Amen. I'm looking for Him to come back. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nobody knows the day nor the hour, but we know this is the era. This is the time of the coming of the Lord. And he's coming after those that are looking for him again the second time. Without sin, unto salvation. Amen. The change is going to be a uh, hundred, uh, whatever that is, blink of an eye. It's going to be the change. That's not going to be the shooting out of here. That's just going to be the change part. More to pull on immortality. Amen. When they see him leave, they gazed as he left. Yeah. So I want to ride on the bottom of my shoe. I told you so. Amen. Say amen. amen. Praise God. That'll be uh, that'll be letting them know what's going on. And they missed it. I don't want to miss it. Do you? No. Amen. I want to go when he comes back. Psalm chapter 42 and verse 10. You help me preach here tonight. <coughs> Psalm chapter 42 and verse 10. Amen. One verse. Had a great supper today, lunch, with uh, Brother and Sister Spratlin. Sister Spratlin just did a tremendous job. Wonderful. We are thankful for it. Praise God. Psalm 42 and 10, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say daily, everybody say daily, daily. unto me, where is thy God? Amen. You help me here tonight. I would preach on the daily sand, the daily sand. Let's pray. Love you, Lord. Honor you. Thank you, God, for life eternal. Thank you, Lord, that you've never forsaken us. Always been there. We love you, God. Victory is ours in you. Would you meet needs in this house? Would you help people tonight to receive what they need from you? We honor you, Lord, that you are high and lifted up. But you're trained us, fill the temple. Honor and praise and glory for the blessings, the touch in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just a little more monitor, please. Amen. Just be honest. Just be real. Just tell the truth. Just answer the question. Just tell it like it is. No variance. Just come across truthfully. Just take the mask off. Praise God. If you're down, say it. If you're discouraged, admit it. If you're sick, the Bible said, let your requests be made known. God is looking for you and I just to be transparent, easily perceived. He's looking for you and I to be honest with Him. God's very interested in our walking with Him. Praise God. Many are experienced today but they have lost that relationship and they have neglected that relationship. I want to tell you, and I know you feel the same way tonight. I love the high times in my life. I love those mountaintop experiences. I love those momentous times that mean something. Like the night that I got saved, 13 years of age, 
Southern Ohio Youth Camp, filled with the Holy Ghost the next night. A few years later, when I was 17, called to preach. Amen. But I want to tell you, our experiences are not what measures us with Christ. Amen. It is the relationship that we have with the Lord in between the momentous great experiences. What makes us great is not a Holy Ghost shut down, shout down on a Sunday night. Come on. No, that's not what makes us great. What makes us great is how we handle ourselves on Monday morning when we go back to work facing that horrible boss that don't like you being a Christian. Amen. Staying on top with the Lord in the face of crueling times. The Bible said walk uprightly before the Lord. Paul said to walk and please God. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> there is a connection between walking with God and pleasing God. I love this scripture. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Look at this. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Praise God. Now listen. If you and I were looking at that, we'd say you got to walk before you can run. And you've got to run before you can fly. But here's the way God did it. He said, you've got to wait upon me and then you're going to fly. And then when you fly, you're going to run. And when you run, you're going to finally walk. Why? Because that's the measure of when you unwind down to the walk that you're still walking to church. You're still walking to the prayer meeting. You're still walking to Wednesday night service. The measure is not whether you can fly or run the aisles. But can you walk and not faint? Can you walk in the midst of the troubles of your day? Because walking is an intensely private matter. Come on. They crowd these bleachers in the Olympics and in the ball games today, watching them run. Right. Amen. But nobody cheers the individuals at the mall walking an hour every day. Nobody's pushing them on. But you know what? They have an appointment in two weeks with a doctor who's going to x-ray their heart. Amen. And he'll know whether they've been walking like they have ought to have been walking. Amen. And I'm preaching tonight to a congregation, including myself. One day our heart is going to be a testimony whether we walk with God or not. Our walk with God is a high list on the devil's hit list. And the devil wants us to stop. He wants us to lay down. He wants us to roll over. He wants us to cool off. He wants us to put the brakes on. The enemy wants to tamper with your walk with God and your integrity with the Lord. He wants to destroy the pattern of holiness and dedication. He wants to attack you at different levels and different fronts so you keep coming to church. Amen. He don't care whether
whether you come to church tonight or not. But he wants to stop your walk with God. The devil will let you pay tithes. But he don't want you walking with God. The devil will laugh at your holiness and your standard. But not your walk with God. The devil wants you to shout on Sunday. To so you're crippled on Monday. The question is this. What can stop a person from walking? Right. To walk with God is everything. Your grandchildren see it. Your children see it. They know it. How you live at home is much more important than if you shout on Sunday morning. Amen. Because all any church ever is, is what all the homes are that make up that church. Come on. Peter Jenkins was a 60s flag burning, draft card burning, heading to Canada, hating the USA, hippie. By the time that he was years later in the 70s then, he realized he hated his country, but he didn't know much about America. So he didn't just read up on America. He decided to walk across America. So he did. And when he made that journey of five years of walking, the United States, from New England to California. He wrote two books about it. The first book he wrote was A Walk Across America. The second book was Along the Edge of America. When he ran out of money on this journey and this walk, he would get a job, settle down for a few months. People invited him over to eat. Some invited him to stay in their home through this long journey. He started out in 1973 in New York, went down the Appalachian Trail, down to New Orleans. From New Orleans, he went across Texas into New Mexico. And from there, he went north into the Rocky Mountains and went all the way to the Pacific Ocean a 5,000 mile, five year journey. He had some amazing jobs. In Louisiana, he was a gator killer. He, man, worked offshore on some of the rigs. When he got to Idaho, he worked on a cattle roundup. One year, he lived in a log cabin in Colorado. He had some hardships. The 130 degrees he put up with in New Mexico. The 30 below that he put up with in the Cascade Mountains. He spent three days in a cave in the Smoky Mountains. Almost went out of his head. He was mugged by three men in New Mexico. His dog got hit and was killed. Amen. Mosquitoes attacking him in the swamps of Louisiana. He drank water out of a cattle trough and mud puddles. He had a backpack that he carried. It weighed anywhere from 70 to 90 pounds. When he got done with his journey, the media asked him, What came the closest thing to making you stop? your walk across America. He said, ma'am, it was not the heat. I was prepared for it. I knew it coming. It was not the cold. I understood it was going to happen. I knew it would be that way. It wasn't hunger and it wasn't thirst. I knew about that. But what nearly made me stop my walk across America was the little grains of sand in my shoes. He said it wasn't what everybody could see, but it was the little things that they could not see and I could not hide. Wasn't the big things but the little sands. 
That everyday hurt is what he's talking about when it comes to you and I tonight. That everyday grinding that we go through. Satan works the same way. Tonight there are more people in hell over small minute things than there are major situations. I've never heard of anybody quitting church when they learn the diagnosis that they had a killing, fast killing cancer. Major problems puts us on our knees. But the little things, they drive us crazy. We can't seem to stop them. We can't put the brakes on them. Things that we expect, amen, and ready for, we prepare for them. Like sickness, like standing by a grave of a loved one. Amen. But that devil, he uses those nagging little things, those weary temptations, those grain of sand in our walk. Amen. Then, when, then we say, I'm disappointed. Amen. We then say, I have been hurt. I'm not going to church. I'm going to lay out. I am tired. When you do go to church, you wear a plastic Jesus mask. Like everything's all right. But inside, you are bleeding. You are hemorrhaging. You are hurting. I'm saying tonight, don't allow the past to encroach upon you and distort your touch with God. Can you see, man? Amen. Yes, Lord. I got an uncle right now in hell. He came to my church one time where I was at. He prayed right there. And I mean, he gloriously got saved. His face expression, I've never seen nothing like it. It was such a change. He was so happy. He was laughing and praising the Lord. And then before the church service was over, he went out of the pew and went out into the parking lot. Amen. And I walked out there and I talked to him. I said, Uncle Bug, what's wrong? He said, I know what I got was real in there. But he said, I cannot help it. There's a man that did your grandpa wrong, my dad. He said, my, my grandpa's a politician. And this man done him wrong. And he said, I can't get over that. I know it was a long time ago, but he said, I can't get over it. The devil's running up through my mind. I can't even go back in church. Amen. And years later, I happened to be home. Amen. Near where my uncle lived. And he died on his front porch. And I ran when I heard. And I reached down and put my hand. And there was no heartbeat on his wrist and no heartbeat. And in hell tonight, Uncle Bob's going around. And you know what he's telling people? When somebody comes up to him and says, I murdered ten people to get to hell. What did you do? And Uncle Buck has to say, I couldn't forgive a fella. And I walked out of church. This is the little thing that gets us that tears us up. That daily little attacks. It's not the boulders that's thrown at us. Amen. You know, sand's an amazing thing. Enough particles of sand. And you can remove the paint right off of an automobile with enough air behind it. Amen. The daily pressures on the job. The mother-in-law has have to move in. I mean, anything can happen. Temptations. Amen. On the internet. You stay up and cross that red flag while your companions asleep. That hurt of abuse as a child. The memories of a bad past. That bleeding in your walk. That every day facing that same boss. That hates your Christian life. Amen. That 
flirting person at the water cooler at the office. It's those little things. Come on. And if you don't overcome them, they will take you to hell. And the devil don't care if it takes five years to get you out of this church just so he can get you out. Come on. The text tonight. My enemies reproach me while they say daily, daily unto me, where is thy God? The first day, they say, where is thy God? And you know what you say? He's right here. The second day, they say, where is thy God? And you say, he's here. Third day, they say, where is your God? And you say, uh, well, he, he's close by. Fourth day, where is thy God? I, I, I'm not sure. She like, I don't feel. Oh, now that, that question is like sand in your shoes. Amen. And a sword in your bones. Samson was strong, but Samson was weak. Delilah, the Bible said, vexed him daily. It wasn't the first time being tempted that he backslid and gave up. It wasn't the second time that made him lay down his calling. But the Bible said she pressed Samson daily. That word press means nag. She nagged him daily. And the only way she did that was that he was around her daily. The Bible said come out from among the world and be a separate. But she'd never done that if he had not been around her. Paul, what was your journey like? Paul said, I was in prison. I was in jail. I had beatings. I had my left for dead. I have the beating of the rod, the stoned and left for dead. I was shipwrecked, the perils of the wilderness. I was robbed. I was in the sea 36 hours. And then somebody could have said, boy, that probably wanted to make you quit. No. Here's what he said in chapter 11 and verse 28. That which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. Paul said, I can stay on a board 36 hours in the sea. I can take the beatings and being wrong, but the daily caring of all those people and those churches, the sand in my shoes. Amen. The wearing away at me that daily on the job that I went to. The memory of that dirty rotten uncle that mistreated me as a five year old child. That systematic wearing away of my life and my shoes. That scare. Amen. Moses' father-in-law said to him, Moses, you will wear away. Amen. You're not going to vanish by next Sunday. You're not going to be lost maybe by next month. It's a continual eating away at you. Like David said, my feet are almost gone. That walking, oh man, that hurting for years, that constant, the Bible said, the little foxes spoil the vine. It's not the bears. It's not the lions. We plan for the lion. We plan for the bear. But the beast is expected. And we understand that. 
but the little foxes. We don't even sometimes realize they're by. It's just a little nip here and a little nip there, a little sneakiness there. Amen. You can even play with foxes and their baby little foxes, but it won't be long until it counts upon you and the slow bleeding comes. Amen. And you are in danger and you don't even realize it and you're hemorrhaging you're going down oh God I wish I could make you shout but this ain't a shout message tonight this is seriousness yeah. yes. amen the devil knows you won't commit a big sin he knows you're not going to murder nobody you're not going to do a real, very worldly thing. So he throws the little temptations. He delivers the small punch. He deals us with minute attacks. Here and there. Here and there. Touching. Reaching. That slow choke. Amen, that reaching to our mind and getting us. He knows your weakness, and that's what he's after. A pastor has to get up early to make a trip that day. Going to church, and then already going to be packed. But he gets up at 4 a.m. to check on his daughter. He forgets that his wife has set the suitcase in the dark hallway. Oh, my. And he said it's dark at 4 a.m. when you just get out of bed. And you're not wearing steel toe work boots. But you're in your bare feet. And he said, I caught my pinky little toe on my left foot on that wheel of that big suitcase. And he said when he hit it, I knew it hurt, but I couldn't see it. So I stuck my foot inside my daughter's door with the night light. And he said, I discovered my big toe and the three following the big toe were going north. But my little toe was going west. Oh, man. That hurts right now. He said, later I told my wife about it. And she said, I didn't hear you scream. He said, I didn't scream. He said, I quoted scripture. He said, when you look down and see your little toe in a 90 degrees to angle, you think of James, the book of James. Brethren, these things ought not to be. He said, and then my wife must have been a medical magician. She said, honey, I bet that hurt. <laughs> oh, man. Don't we love them, brothers? <laughs> then he told her, he said, well, I thought it did, but it was so numb, I, it really didn't hurt that bad. But he said, when I grabbed it and pointed it back north, oh! <laughs> he said, I quickly went into the shower at 4.25 a.m. I got out at 4.30. I taped it up, oh! And straightened it out north. Amen. And then I went straight to the lazy boy and laid back until about seven when my wife got up. And when she got up, she came in there and said, Honey, what are you doing 
already ready for church. He said, I'll tell you why. Your suitcase. <laughs> so he said, I went to church that morning. He said, now if you hurt your toe like that, saving somebody's life, it is a heroic thing. But he said, if you punt or kick a Samsonite suitcase, there's no sympathy. You don't even want to tell nobody about it. Amen. He said, I parked the car at the church parking lot. He said, I was in pain. He said, I got out of the car and whipped that leg out and oh. He said, I stepped up on my feet and oh. He said, somebody came by and parked right by me and got out. He said, I stood up just like everything was all right. And they said, how you doing, Pastor? He said, great. <laughs> great. <laughs> and they started to say, come on, let's go in. He said, no, everything's good. Just go in. I'll be in in a minute. They turned around to walk in. He bent over. Oh, that toe. Amen. He got in church acting like everything was fine. Nothing's wrong. Praise the Lord. Amen. Talking to people. Uh, when he got through shaking a few hands, walking normal, he might have in the hallway and bent over. Oh, God. Jesus. Jesus, help me. Amen. All the time. He was around people that could help him. He was around people that could come to his rescue, that could pray for him, but he's not honest. Amen. His pride had got in the way and lost his honesty. Listen to me. It doesn't matter how small the issue is, but when it affects your walk, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. I'm saying the night, be truthful, be honest, and you can get the help that you need. Just admit it where you're at. Just say it like it is. Just open up to things. Lay it on the line. Just say it. I am tired. I am weak. I'm not feeling well. I need a touch. I need the move of God. I'm down right now. Amen. What am I telling you? Admit the sand is in your shoe. Because sand can take you down. And it can take you down to the bottom. Jesus never commanded us to wash our feet. Even though we know we got to do that. He said, you ought to wash one another's feet. This is my message right here and I'm going to quit. Come, sister. Amen. He said, you ought to wash one another's feet. We must help each other. We must heal one another. We must not let our friends die with the sand. We see the pain in other people's lives. <coughs> Care for those that are in need. Pick up that dying man on the road. Be the good Samaritan. Catch that runaway slave that the Bible talked about. Somehow stop Jonah from getting on that ship. Don't let Ethan hide that wedge. If we helped one another, 
like we ought, there would be so much less problems in our lives. Amen. A preacher's wife and son died in a car accident. Play softly for me. He went to the gravesite every day for a year. Put his hand on each grave. He wore down to the dirt between the graves by laying on his belly and crying. In the midst of this time, three people in the pastor's church started taking him out in the evening to eat. Places that stayed open like, like, like Denny's and Hojo and IHOP. They would keep him there until he broke out in a joyous laughter. And then they would leave. He was such an every night thing that he ended up calling them the Three Stooges. Because they made him laugh. And he'd always pay for the food. So they got up one night and started to leave. Just like all the other nights. And he stopped and said, Hey, said, fellas, why don't you guys pay tonight? They stopped and they turned around seriously. They said, Pastor, we're doing something for you that money cannot buy. And the pastor just dropped his mouth open and watched them walk on out. Those three stooges, he said, were not the three stooges. He said, they were the three wise men in my life. They wouldn't let him die in sadness. They wouldn't let him die down and discouraged. Amen. They kept him laughing. They kept him joyful. They helped him survive. Listen to me. That daily sand in your shoes that daily move of the enemy in your mind, that daily things you think of the past, those things that you won't let loose of and you won't let go of, those things that are really maybe not even sinful, but they lead to sin. sin. They lead to deeper thoughts and deeper ways that are away from God. They nag you. They press you. Amen. They're like the light in your life. They'll get you somewhere, somehow. Oh, Sing it for me here. Take him to the place. Watch dead things live again. Oh, God. One touch of his grace. And it's all washed away. Oh. He's calling out your name. Yes. It doesn't matter where you've been or whatever you have faced. Don't be afraid. To take him to the place. Let's stand to our feet. Let's raise our hands for a moment and just worship God. Glory of the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Oh, What about you right now? You want to come to this altar first. You want to come down these aisles and say, yes, God, there's some little things 
There's some little daily sands that are eating me away. God, I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I'm struggling, God. I want to be honest tonight. I want to come true and come clean. I want to wipe the slate clean, God. I want you to help me, Lord. Oh, God, pick up the pieces for me. Come on right now. Don't you wait on somebody else. Don't you think about somebody else. Come on tonight. God's dealing with people standing here tonight. Oh, yes. He wants to help you. I love the honesty of young people. They're not worried about an ego or about a companion or what they might think. Amen. What about you adults? Forget it. Open up. Say yes. Lord, I've got to have strength. I've got to get out of this hole I'm in. Quit hiding it. Take the mask off. Come clean with God. Say yes, God. I need your touch. To take him to the I need that touch. Come on. I'm waiting on you. There's a few more. I could come back and pick you out right now. I could come back and hold your hand and pull you, but I'm not going to do it. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. If you want revival, get these little things adjusted. In control of God. Oh, yes. All right, everybody else. These are our friends. They need help. We need to lay our hands on their head, on their back. If we care about this church and the God we love, we will come and help our friends. Come on. Come on. To the place where dreams are shattered. You can't kneel, come and stand. Come and let's have revival. Come and let's touch God. If we're going to claim church of God, we've got to live like it. We've got to show it. We have got to be that. We have got to pray. We've got to get stirred. We've got to let God administrate His will. You need God. There's people here right now, you're sitting back. But God wants to help you. You need to pray in these altars and get a stirring in your soul. Oh, God. There's a place oh, and you felt you lost the right My God. We're the only Help us. Come on, church, pray. Come on to that church, pray. Doesn't matter where you've been or whatever you have faced. Don't you be afraid to take him to the place. Watch dead things live again. For one touch of his grace and his all washed away. He's calling out your name. It doesn't matter. There's a place where hope is in on, where you're free from sin and shame, where He heals your broken heart and speaks new life again, where His love is ever drawing to a place where you'll never be alone. Take Him to the place, 
watch dare things again again For one touch of his grace And his all washed away He's calling out your name It doesn't matter Watch dead things live again For one touch of his grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name It doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid To take him to the place To the place your dreams are shattered you felt you lost the race You're the only thing that's left The sorrow and pain And you wonder if you matter Or did anyone see you at all Take it to the place Watch dead things live again One touch of his grace And it's all washed away It doesn't matter where you've been or whatever you have faced. Don't be afraid to take him to the place. Watch dead things live again for one touch of his grace. And it's all washed away. He's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been or whatever. There's a place where hope is given, where you're free from sin and shame, where he heals your broken heart, and he speaks to life again, where his love is ever drawing to a place where you'll never be alone. Take him to the place, watch dead things live again, one touch of his grace. Watch dead things live again For one touch of his grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name It doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid To take him to the place To the place where dreams are shattered, and you felt you lost the race. Where the only thing that's left is sorrow and pain. You wondered if you mattered, or did anyone see? Take him to the place, watch the. Doesn't matter where you've been or whatever you have faced. Don't be afraid to take him to the place. Watch dead things live again for one touch of his grace. And it's all washed away. He's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been or whatever.
reach down and touch her. Oh, yeah. Sister Evelyn, will you stand up for Sister Sandy tonight? Sister Sandy seems like she has gone from one battle to another. She's gone from the flu to double ear infection. And what's it, the shingles now? Gloria, the daughter's trying to tell her that they think that's what she has. She uh, said this afternoon that she was hurting so bad in her shoulder and her arm until the city to cry. I know that there's a God that can heal. Jesus bore those stripes on his back for their healing, didn't he? Hallelujah. You know what I'd like to do is have some of you that's going to believe God with us. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I don't want you to come up here and pray for him and then tell him, well, tomorrow you need to go see a doctor. I want you to come up here and let's pray and let's believe God and believe that Jesus is that great physician. He's the healer. All right. He's the one that's going to take care of it. Come on, church. If there's any sick in my dear, let them call for the elders of the church. Anoint them with the Father. Lord, we say glory tonight. Come on, you know you're healing. Come on, 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 you
been speaking to her and telling her everything's going to be restored back. We know that we don't have the power to do that, but we pray to the one that does. Amen. Hallelujah. What's your name, sister? Christine? Father, you're the God that knows exactly where she's at because the Lord will be right by her son. Lord, faith. Just a rain. Just a seed of faith.
Somebody lift your hands and worship Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and worship Jesus tonight. Come on, worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Lord, your presence is here tonight. Reach out and touch the hand of this heart. Reach out my faith tonight and touch the hand of this heart. Ladies, I, I call them the sisters. That's what they are. But they need God to touch them physically. But we're going to go a step further tonight because both of them have companions that need salvation. Need the Lord to save them. So tonight I want you to pray that God, number one, will touch their bodies. They need that physical touch. God's already working a work in Sister Friend's life. I believe God's working a work in Sister Evelyn's life and up on her body. I believe that. But tonight we're also going to pray. We're going to pray. All right? We're going to pray and ask God to save me. We're going to ask God to save me. Sister Evelyn, your husband's name's Bill. Sister Fred, your husband's name's Larry. Can you just call them amen? Can you call them in out to God tonight and say, God, I need salvation. Come on, those of you that can't place your hand upon them, the rest of you, will you extend your hand in this direction? Father, in the name of Jesus. I worship you, Lord. 
You are my Lord. You are my Lord. I will serve no other. But I will serve you, God. I will serve you with a piece of adversity. I will serve you with the good times. And I will serve you in the hard times. But you are the Lord, my God. I will lift my hands and praise you. I will lift my voice and praise you. For I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Anyone else here tonight, you have a need for prayer, physical, spiritual, family crisis. Maybe it's a job crisis. Jesus knows. Jesus has the answer. Jesus knows and Jesus has the answer. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Sister Leah, Sister Pauline, would you two ladies mind just coming over here and placing your hand upon her shoulders? Sister, get some oil upon your hands. Just rub them together, okay? It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's not by might, it's by my spirit. Spirit of the most high God. He can call the storm, make the sun. In the name of Jesus. together, Father. I think about the times, Lord, that people came to you. And you said, I will go heal. Lord, I said to me, I said, no, Lord, but if you just speak the word. This is what I know tonight, that, Lord, that though you are in this house and you're hearing our prayers. I know, Lord, that you're right by Brother Jackson tonight. Lord, he may be there at home. God, he may be in that favorite chair. Or he may be up on that bed. I know, Lord, that you're right there with him. I'm asking you, Lord, to reach over and touch him. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch that body tonight. Raise him up. God, raise him up. God is a testimony of the power of God. Testimony of the power of God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Sister Caroline. This lady wants to come to church. Amen. She's supposed to be in rehab. Don't lie to me. She's in rehab. 
looks like to me that she's in church. And she'll tell you right quick, it's God that's reached out and touched her body. Let's believe God, Father. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, God, for reaching down, Lord, and touching her body so many times. But tonight, Lord, we stand in need of that touch of you. Father, I'm just asking you, Lord, to move. I'm asking you, God, to move. I'm asking you, God, to move. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Reach down, Lord, touch her. God, strengthen every part of her body. God, strengthen the heart tonight. God, strengthen the heart tonight, Lord. Step when you want, by the grace of God. It feels good not to be confined to that chair, don't it? I will worship you, Lord. 
Lord, I will worship you. I will worship you. One more time, can you lift your hands to Jesus tonight? Can you just lift your hands unto Jesus tonight? Worship Him. Love Him. Love Him. Oh, how true. Without you, Lord, we fall apart. God, we're not falling apart. Lord, we need you. God, you're the one that keeps us together. You're the one that strengthens us in the midst of our weakness. Oh, hallelujah. God, you're the one that gives us wisdom. You're the one that gives us knowledge. Father, will you make your people to be strong? God, will you make your people to be courageous? And tonight, Lord, upon the authority of your word and upon the authority of the Spirit of God and through the power of the Holy Ghost, I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of discouragement for God that is totally the opposite of courage. So God, I pray, Lord, that you will release courage into your people. God, to make them strong. God, increase their knowledge. Increase their wisdom. Give them spiritual insight in the Holy Ghost. My God, I pray for a manifestation of God to appear in individual hearts and lives that are seeking after you. God, there are some, Lord, that are desperate tonight. God, you see the burdens that they bear. God, you see how that the devil seeks, Lord, to even depress. But God, we will not be depressed, for we will believe God. We will believe God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Church, look at me just for a moment. And I want you to hear me. James and Erica have been coming with us and being here at church on Sunday morning. I believe that God is working in their life. But I also know the devil is fighting them. I know the devil's fighting them. James called me this afternoon and said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. Said, Erica is so depressed. She's not been out of the bed for at least two days. Will you bind that spirit of depression in the name of Jesus? I don't know how you're going to do it, God. But God, I'm asking you, Lord, to walk into that room. For in the name of Jesus, we bind this spirit of depression. Turn her loose. Release her. Leave the room. Leave the house. Turn her loose. Release her. Leave the room and leave the house in the name of Jesus. God, let your power, let there be a freedom. Let them feel a love that they know that can only be coming from God right now. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to move upon their hearts. I know that, God, there's a hunger there for them to serve you. But, my God, the devil is finding them. He does not want them in church. He does not want them to have the liberty. God, all he wants them to do is be bound to the past and bound to depression. But tonight I'm asking you, Lord, to set them free, even as you did the men of Kadera. My Lord, set them free. God, let liberty come to that home. In the name of Jesus. 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 Can you just lift your hands and say, Lord, I believe you. I believe that you can do the impossible. For there's nothing impossible with God. Oh, God, I love you. Holy Ghost, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. Can you just worship him for a moment? Can you just love on him? God's good to us. Brother Brolin preached this morning to say that God has this idea that, that church and coming to church is all about him. I agree with him. We just need to worship him. As we begin to worship him, you find that God begins to wrap his arms around you and God begins to minister unto you.
God begins to love you back as you begin to love him. Can you just love on him for a moment? Can you thank him for the touch? Can you thank him for his healing? Can you thank him for the salvation? Can you thank him for the peace of mind? Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you tonight. I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Does anybody feel like Brother Bowen preached to you tonight? Amen. Some of you are not being honest, and that's one thing he talked about was being honest. Take that religious face off. Hey, Come to church and be honest. I need God. <clears throat> I, I started thinking, Brother Bowen, I don't know how many times this past week, I told my wife, I said, I've got something in my shoe. And it has irritated me. I'd stop, <clears throat> take off my shoe, clean it out. It wouldn't be long until I'd feel it again. <laughs> Sometimes you just feel like the devil's in your shoe, you know. You just like to kick him. But then I started realizing that the socks that I had on, it's almost like that had little chips of wood or something. And it got into it. And every time that I put my shoe on, it was like little spurs, little splinters. That shoe was rubbing them right into my feet. You know how to take care of that? Get another pair of socks. Amen? And I cannot add anything to what this man had to preach tonight, but I believe that God spoke to our hearts. And if you're not careful... You keep looking at little things like little things. And you don't take care of them until that little thing creates a sore. And that sore gets so bad until that sometimes you cannot treat it right. Jesus did not say it was the great big limb that got into your eye. That prevented you from seeing. It's the little moment. It's the little things. Oh, how that God wants to touch us. Not only does God want to get the sand out of our shoes, God wants to get the sand out of our eyes. Yes. You see, if our eyes have sand in them, they burn. They water. We cannot see clear. We need God to give us a spiritual eye wash. <clears throat> Food for thought tonight as we leave, as you begin to pray for the sinner people, I want you to pray that God will open their eyes spiritually. The Pharisees had Jesus, the Son of God, standing before them, and they could not see that he was the son of God because they were blinded spiritually. There's people in this world tonight you try to tell them they need Jesus but they do not see that they need Jesus. But whenever the Lord begins to remove I call them spiritual cataracts off of their eyes and their eyes are opened up and they begin to declare I need Jesus. I need Jesus. We need God to touch people's eyes spiritually don't we? Be back with us tomorrow night. Spend some time in prayer tomorrow. And let's just come back believing that God is going to reach down. That God's going to touch. That God's going to save. Invite people. Invite people. I had an opportunity yesterday. We had uh, all the workers that had been working on the parsonage. And uh, believe me, some of them need the Lord. And I, I told them, I said, hey, I want to invite every one of you to church. I'd love to see them come in here. I also told them, I said, hey, I appreciate everything that you are, all have done for us. I do. But I'm so glad that you're out of my house so I can get back into it. Amen. I want you to, I want you to help us pray that God will help us to, to reach out. It seems like in the past few weeks especially, God has just opened up so many doors for us to be able to minister to people on the outside of the church and try to, and I believe that God's going to help us to where that we're going to see some of these that's going to start coming in. Do not get discouraged if the one that you invited don't show up because I've often seen where that they didn't show up but God had somebody else coming around the corner. Right. You do your part. God will do the rest. Paul planted upon the water, but it was God that gave.
in the increase. Amen. So let's pray. I know that it's a sacrifice on a lot of people's parts to come back out Tuesday, Wednesday, and Monday and, and all of that. But it's not really a sacrifice, but that you get into the presence of God. Don't look at this like a sacrifice. Amen. Look at it as a privilege. I get to go to the house of God. I get another opportunity, not just Wednesday night this week. I can go three times during the week instead of just one. I'll be in the house of God. Philippians 4 and 8. If you don't know it, go home and look it up and practice Philippians 4 and 8. Stand. Please. Nobody likes to be ordered. So please stand. Ladies, if you've not got with Sister Beth on the cakes, please get with her. She's here tonight. Don't forget, it is this Saturday. Can you believe how fast time is going by? It's this Saturday. So get with her. Tell her how many cakes that you're baking. Five, ten, fifteen. Let her know, okay? And uh, Brother Hanks is going to be here with us. He's going to be the auctioneer. And as most of you already know, he auctions a little bit and gives us a mission story. And uh, it's fantastic to be there with in, in such a cake auction as that. And that's what this uh, cake auction is all about. It's about missions. And upon a good note, last Sunday, last Sunday, you remember that the pledge this year was $1,000 to Hong Yang. I believe that over 800 of that has already come in. So thank God there's $190 that needs to come in for Hong Yang and then the rest. So God's going to help us. God is going to help us this year to reach out to all of these other people. Father, I cannot praise you enough. I cannot love you enough for the presence of God that has been here with us tonight. I thank you, Lord, for all of our all of our people. But God, I thank you tonight for our guests that have been here. And God, I just want you, Lord, to arrest their heart. Lord, I, I've read in the Bible where that you're going to put a hook in that old bear's jaw and you're going to draw them, you're going to pull them down. But God, I ask tonight that you would just put a hook in people's jaws and just kind of tug them and draw them to the house of God. Lord, let it be the drawing power of God. Father, let it be the drawing power of God. Father in heaven, will you touch us tonight? God, will you touch us tonight? Lord, for we need the touch of the Master's hand. God, anoint us as we go forth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see Christ in you. God bless you.